Welcome everybody, welcome to the Tomb of Illumination. Oh. Tomb of Illumination, that's my site. Um, where I break down a lot of stuff concerning religion, mythological stories, uh, the physics involved with the flat earth system, the actual realm we live in, is indeed flat. All the ancients knew it and it's fully described but ignored. Uh, or not seen because it's in riddle form, most of it. So this is what I can do, I can break down the riddles. So here, here, here is a riddle and I'm going to try and explain it to you. It might go into a couple of videos because they're quite tricky and I have to think along the way because I can't, I have to remember this off by heart because I don't like writing and writing will take me forever if I'm trying to decipher one of these mythological stories. It's like the Bible, if you wanted to explain it properly, you'd, there wouldn't be enough books in the world. So this this is um, this stems from a question from Brian, who asked me why is there thirteen uh, moon cycles, or possibly thirteen zodiac signs, as opposed to the twelve zodiacal signs that we we know of, right? So, and it's all about Orphicus, is that how you pronounce it? Now, that, if you haven't seen my earlier videos, you might want to check them out. That is in regards to this, this video I did on bread. And the overlay. There's an overlay of the southern hemisphere as it goes into its winter, down into a mente. Goes, slips under the northern hemisphere. And there's a, there's a moment in time which involves Egypt, because Egypt is at the ground point of this celestial position. Orphicus represents that moment in time. <laughs> Excuse me. And it's also associated with, um, this gets really complicated, with um, Orion's belt. So if you're going to imagine Ryan's belt being from A to B, which is, um, I'll get this hang on a second. You can draw a line between Sirius and Aldebaran. But then you've got this line across it, which represents Regal and Beetle Geese. So... There's many stories to be told about this cross, the actual cross, the crossing, um, but the crossing is, is the other wings that cross the line, the line through the, the belt from Sirius to Aldebaran. I've probably lost you already, but this is what these things are all about. Just so confusing. So, what am I saying? I'm. Um, Okay, so I'm starting, I want to break down why there's 13 as opposed to 12 zodiacal signs. And it starts, it starts here. Um, understanding these mythological stories. So this is about e Oedipus. Okay, the Greek myth, Oedipus. The story of Oedipus, the most tragic of all Greek myths. It's not tragic at all. There's nothing tragic in any of these mythological stories. They're just spun that way. Common man thinks they're all either evil or depressing, sad, whatever. Tragic. Um, but I'm going to explain this one to you, okay? So Oedipus is spelled O-E-D-I-P-U-S. It's pronounced Oedipus, not Oedipus, Oedipus. And the O is silent, right? Well, if you know your etymology, O stands for I. So if you break the word down, you can go I, O for I, ED, past tense, sort of, and or dip, takes you into baptize, to be over one's head, which is pass over, or dip in water, 
because all the celestial body is all about water. It's up in the atm uh, atmosphere, it's moisture. And then you go puss, which will take you to piss, sounds like piss, to go worse, or to go, or to go. Or takes you to pi, P-I, uh, which will take you to P, which is little mouth, or P-I, pi, on the periphery. So to understand all these stories, you have to understand the theatre system. The periphery. And that goes back to man's arc of horizon. Every man has his arc of horizon. He stands here at 90 degrees to zenith. That's the capstone. Also the uh, other, what's the other word? Capstone. Can't remember. There's man, always 90 degrees. That's how he sees his world around him. It all comes back perpendicular off his arc of horizon. Okay? So, it's about this point. So everything is all about this point, because that's the alignment, which is between the two hemispheres of our Earth. There's a tropical gap, or celestial tropical gap. You can draw the suns and a lemon like that, toe to toe, or you can just relate it to the two Milky Ways lining up. But at a particular time of the year, which is there, man's hour can come about. What he's wanting is his, his moon sign to be in line in the two Milky Ways. But we're going to get into that a bit more. We'll check out our previous videos. So here we got this story. The story of Oedipus, the most tragic of all Greek myths. The story of Oedipus is perhaps the most tragic story of ancient Greece. The mythological character was the king of Thebes. Okay, Thebes today is now called Luxor, okay? And lived under the shadow of a curse that could not be avoided to the end of his days. Now, the curse. You can think of all of us living in it, being born into a dark realm. So that's our curse until we go through our second birth, which is this divine moment in life. And it's in our physical world we have to go through it. So we're born with this curse, you can say, in this instance, uh, till the end of your days. The end of your day is this, is this uh, awakening period, your second birth. That's end times, end days. It's not when you physically die. It's nothing to do with it. No, it's this point here. That's your end days. Okay? This shows that the ancient Greeks not only created glorious stories, but also tragedies laden with pain and despair. That's common man's interpretation, load of rubbish. Oedipus was the son of Laius and Jocasta, the king and queen of Thebes. The misfortunes of his line were the result of a curse inflicted by his father. Now you can take the father as his physical father being ignorant, maybe. Or you can take it as the father, the father of creation, which takes you back to creation, the black hole of creation, where we all, we all come from. That's what we all, we all end up down here in this curse, okay, before we are awoken, into, brought into the light, reborn. Okay. Uh, let's go back a bit, here we go. Oedipus was the son of Laos and Jocasta, okay. King and Queen of Thebes. Then you come down here. When his son was born, Laos consulted an oracle to find out his fate. To his horror, the oracle revealed that he was condemned to die at the hands of his own son. Now you've got to always remember, realise the son at S-U-N. Um, and this is associated with the stars. Every man, physical man on earth has a star. Every living animal actually. There's a star, so you can consider that as sun. That's the centre, you know, you can, it, it's like the soul or the core. And we've been an, expl we're an exploded image from that star, from that core, cast down on the earth, as above, so below type thing. The parents ordered a servant to kill their son, but the servant was unable to carry out this brutal act because no common man can create this act. This is the death they're talking about, okay? This alignment. 
This is rebirth. You have to kill off the old way, your lower self, to be raised up. So there's the death. So no common man can do this. It's godly. It comes like a thief in the night, as is written. Okay. So this, so the servant, therefore, passed laos on to a shepherd. Well, they've gone and used the word laos. He's the father. He's not the son. Of uh, uh, of is isn't it? Uh, edifice, edifice. Okay, so whether that's a mistake here, or they're referring to the fact that you you they're both the one person. Like all the like a lot of the mythological stories, Abel and Cain are the one person. A lot of these stories are twins, they're brothers, they're of the one, but in a dual form. Okay, just like Earth is in a dual firm form, southern and northern hemisphere. It's more explained in the original Rome creation of Rome story. Um, so the shepherd called the boy, yeah, and the shepherd called the boy Oedipus, or swollen feet, since Laos had tied the feet tightly. Okay, now we're coming into the alignment. You see, the feet of the sons in a lemma, they're both tied together in this alignment. Tightly, the child was taken to Corinth. Corinth, this is the center, the alignment. The center. His center. His center point, the alignment. That's regarded as the center, Corinth. Corinth. And given to King Polybus, who had no children and would raise him as his own son. You're raising your own son, yes, you in, raise your own son. He has to raise... You're raising your own sun within yourself. You are creating this moment. Aligning your chakras, being in the right frequencies, lots of terms for it. But it's self-manifested, but godly intervent godly intervention. Futile effort to escape fate. When he was an adult, Oedipus heard a rumour that he was not the son of Polybus and his wife Merope. Driven by doubt, he went to the Oracle of Delphi. See, this is where they get that movie Matrix from. So this is part of it. These Hollywood people know, know the secrets of the universe. It's pretty freaky. Like they're basically a flow on of the um, poet and script writer who did, um, you know, the old plays. What's his name? Romeo and Juliet stuff, that guy. It's a carry on from that. Uh, and asked if the king and queen were really his parents. But instead of answering, the oracle told him that he had a dark destiny, mating with his mother and killing his own father. It's a silly thing. <laughs> this, is, this is a story. Mating with his own mother is the alignment. The two Milky Ways aligning at this moment in time where the moon is in there. The moon is the mother. It's also associated with the feminine side of the male where he's marrying a sister to become singularity. A male as a female entity that separated at this physical world which was called as Lilith. Separated. Like Adam's first wife, see? And then it's separated. Then it gets back together and the story goes on to Adam and Eve. So the mother is always the moon, okay, or the queen. The king's the sun, the queen's the moon. Uh, but instead, uh, okay, dark destiny, mating with his own mother and killing his own father. This is the Zeus story where Zeus was afraid and killed off all the firstborn because they were going, one was going to kill him, replace him. This is what happens. The sun gets replaced. Your star gets in the alignment and becomes a new sun. Mind-blowing stuff for a common human's brain, but that's what happens. Uh, desperate to avoid the oracle's confession, Oedipus, who thought that Polybus and Merope were his true parents, left Corinth and headed for the city of Thebes. So he's left the centre, wandering out around the... I've got another picture down here, the zodiac signs. I won't put it up there though. 
It's all to do with the zodiac, okay? Zodiac. On the way to Thebes, Oedipus met Laos. Yeah, there's his father now, or you can say his brother. It's complicated, but anyway, stick to the father. And the two argued over which chariot had the right of way. So you have to understand the whole flat earth system to understand any of these mythological stories. So our oh, chariots, okay? So to understand the chariots, you have to understand the two sky rotations. The Northern Hemisphere star rotation, you know, and then you've got a, a Southern star rotation around the South. Centered on Sigma Octantis, centered on Polaris. These wheels are like the chariot wheels. And they're both moving together that way, west, the two chariots. Now this is the model of Earth, if you can look down on it, and you see this is a smaller, more energised, and then you have these big wheels out here, it's way bigger because it's expanded out. This is where we get this loaf, loaf of bread expansion. So the field out in the south is way bigger. So you can imagine these two big co these cogs beating. Well. You know, this cog spread like this, but there's just as many um, spokes in here as there is in here, but they're all finer, aren't they? Well, it's this alignment. Two of the, the cogs lining up. This is the part of this alignment here, and the two Milky Ways line up. So this is when you have to think. Um, where are we? Uh, on the way to the, the two argued over which chariot had the right of way. Okay? So you've got to think of this cog it's in these meeting. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Which is the right of way? Which is quick or which is slowest? One of the two. Uh, and the two argued over which chariot had the right of way. The thief. Theban king moved to strike the insolent young man. So the king is always at the centre. You can take the story back to the King Arthur story. I think it's King Arthur. Where the king stayed in the castle and the son went out to meet the guest at the, at the, at the lake here. And they went fishing. Because that's all represented by this tropical gap. Because the energy system, you go down, that's the, that's the lake. And they're fishing, drop their rods down under here. Uh, Move to strike the insolent young man with a sceptre. Sceptre is the alignment, aligning through the two Milky Ways or the Sun and Lemus, whatever. Unaware that Laos was his true father, threw the old man from his chariot and killed him. Okay, took over the sun. You could say this happens at the solar eclipse where it goes dead, then comes alive again. It's all connected to that. You've replaced the sun. Thus, Laos was killed by his own son. Okay? And half of the prophecy that the king had tried to evade by ordering the infant Oedipus death was fulfilled. So you, your star has replaced the other star. And the, the other star now just goes back to an, a, a, a star because they're all stars. The suns are all stars, just illuminated because they've come into this alignment. And it's all physics described in the way we understand physics. The capacitor plates and the energy coming between them all. It's a long story. But I've described a lot of it in my previous videos. Uh, before reaching Thebes, Oedipus met the Sphinx. A legendary beast with the head and breast of a woman. So what's the Sphinx represent? The Sphinx represents Leo. Maybe I should put that on the border. We've <clears throat> got the zodiac sign now. Okay. Leo, the Sphinx. That's where the solar eclipse has occurred, the main one. <clears throat> Met the Sphinx, a legendary beast with the head and breast of a woman. The head and the breast is down here. 
as the woman will be the moon. So where's the moon? So you have to think of it like that. You've got the sun and then where's the moon sign? Where's the moon at this point? And at the solar eclipse, they're actually both in there together. So what have I got here? A legendary beast with the head and breast of a woman. The body of a lioness, which is the lion, and the wings of an eagle. So this is where we go back to this, what I was showing you, the alignment through Orion's belt, the, the line that goes through it, are the wings of the eagle, which take you through to uh, Scorpion. See, it's right angle. It, the right angle sort of thing. Well, close enough. It's right there. Right angles through this alignment. So they're the wings of the eagle. Oh, there's, yeah, like that. This has never been revealed before. This is all top secret stuff, you know? Divine information. Uh, wings of an eagle. The Sphinx was sent to the road that approaches Thebes and punishment... Oh. The Sphinx was sent to the road that approaches Thebes as punishment from the gods and would str strangle any traveller who could not solve a certain riddle. So they're telling you that this person here can decipher this riddle. Okay? Only he can do this. They're all riddles. A uh, certain riddle. However, Oedipus did solve this riddle. He's the enlightened one. See? I lost that picture. Oedipus, reward for freeing Thebes from the Sphinx, was the hand of the Dowanger Queen. Was the hand of the Dowanger Queen. Jocasta, his mother. No one realised then that Jocasta was the real mother of Oedipus. See, the moon is the creator of this divine entity, uh, this awakening, because she's the seventh. She gives her one seventh. So you can imagine you've aligned all your chakras, but you need the seventh aligned, and it has to be the moon in this alignment with the two Milky Ways of the two hemispheres lining up. She's the mother of creation, okay? Your creation. The mythological, the creation of the earth, a one-off event, and the creation of you in your second birth. That's your creation story. The unimaginable destiny, unimaginable destiny of Oedipus. Oedipus, now king of Thebes, tried to solve the problem of a plague caused by the assassination of the previous king. Now, if someone kills one of these awoken people, the world will taste its wrath, man, because that guy has protected. If anybody killed this guy, hell have no mercy on the earth. Okay? The oracle warned that the only solution was to capture the king's assassin of whom they, there was only one witness. So they're trying to tell you there's only one witness and that's that person himself. Only he knows what's, what's going on, what's happened. No one else. Jocasta, now the wife of Oedipus, sent for the witness to, of the murder of her deceased husband and former king. And Oedipus questioned him. He revealed that some years ago they gave him a child to abandon on Mount Citeron. It's always on a mount. It's up here. This is your mount. Up at the top. Man's Ark of Horizon. At the top. That's your the zenith. Capstone, whatever. I'll be revealing all this other stuff later on. Mountains and why they mounts and all that sort of stuff in other videos. The son of King Laos and Queen Jocasta had been handed over to die, preventing a fatal oracle from being fulfilled. However, he had turned him over to the shepherd out of mercy. So you can probably take that back to the Abel and Cain um, story. Who was, which one was the shepherd? He discovered that he was that child who was destined to be the murderer of his father, and he cursed both himself and fate. 
when Chacosta entered the house, these are houses, okay? Entered the house, when the moon enters the house, Entered the house, she ran to the palace, pa palace, bedroom, and hanged herself. Now hanging, you could say bedroom because she just refers to the Bible again, which is mentioned mentions the, uh, the bride's, the groom's chamber, bridegroom's chamber. They're getting it on. This is. The solar eclipse time, they're getting it on. That's the conception of this child will be created, reborn. Um, kissed himself in the bedroom and they hanged herself. And hanging is to do with this, the sun's analemma, right? This, all this is about the sun's analemma, because Christ is the sun. Hanged, right there. That's the moment in time where the kings will be born. The whole story of this dude. Okay, it's there, they're hanging. The whole Jesus story is all about that period too, the 6th of September. Sixth day of creation, the hanging. Bedroom, she hanged herself. Oedipus, furious, ran through the house and discovered the body of Jocasta. He screamed when he saw her lifeless body and stabbed his own eyes with the needles. Stabbed his own eyes because... The story goes, you lose some eyesight, your eyes, when you gain your third eye. You've opened your third eye. It screws up, messes with the other two eyes. With the needles that held his robe together. Okay, there, there's the needle that holds his robe together. And you can also um, connect it with the Milky Way. There's the Bolton Milky Way. And needles, needles in a haystack. The Milky Way is the manger, born in a manger, because the sun is born there in the manger. What's a manger? A long trough. And the manger was, had straw in the Jesus story. So imagine a needle in the haystack. It's all connected. That. Uh, robe, the robes together. This is when they're together. The robes together. Took these needles, and you can. Connect the, um, uh, the body stabbed his own eyes with his needles and that held his robe together. Also, you can go to the Sumerian Ankh, just got another name for it. It's tied together. It's also the same thing. The same thing as the uh, Egyptian Ankh. You know, all those kings and queens are holding this thing here. The thread, the thread. The tragic story ends with Oedipus leaving the palace with bloodied eyes and asking to be banished as soon as possible. He says that he banished, like he's now been sacrificed in this physical world. He is now out there. He knows the truth. He knows everything. He is now banished from this silly physical realm where everything's just all imagination and crazy, just crazy. Uh, possible. He says he prefers to, to blind himself because he could not bear to look at his parents in hell, the children he had fathered, or the people of Thebes. In other words, this is hell. He's now left hell. He's looking down. He can look through this now and know that everyone's ignorant. So that could take you back to the beginning, why he's cursed because of his father. If his further, father had woken up, come into the light, been reborn or whatever, saw the truth, understood, seeking the truth or whatever at least, he would know and he would have come out all right too. But he's cursed too with everybody else, born into the physical world, ignorant as anything, until we wake up. Wait, open the third eye. So this is what he's saying. He can't bear to see his parents who are ignorant of everything he now knows and even his own children because they've been so falsely indoctrinated since birth. The whole schooling system is run by the evil entities, the top Freemasons and stuff, to keep you away from knowing the truth. 